The first two episodes of Detail are now available on ESPN+. Plus. You can download the new ESPN app and start your free trial of ENP, uh, ESPN Plus today. And we are delighted to welcome Kobe Bryant to the program live here on Get Up. And so, Kobe, through your own words, and we're just watching some of this, and it's fascinating. I didn't want it to end. Can you, in your own words, can you give us a sense of what fans can expect to see on Detail? Well, it's just more of a strategic breakdown, you know, of figuring out exactly um, what the defense is doing, what um, a player is facing, and then how to counter that, you know, very specifically. You know, when I watch film, you, you never go into watching film having all the answers, right? You have to be able to keep an open mind and observe what is actually happening out there on the floor. And uh, not only looking at why things work, but also looking at opportunities that you may have missed uh, that may be there in game two, game three, game four, game five, or whatever. So it's more, more, more of that, more of that detail breakdown. Now, and we look forward to it, and I've got Jalen sitting right here, and I will tell you right now that I am begging you at some point to break down the 81-point game. That's, <laughs> that's the game that Jalen, that's what I want to see. I want to see the two of you in the tape room looking at oh, the 81-point game. we can do it, game. no doubt about it. That's all-time greatness. <laughs> hey, Jalen, man, they're never going to let you live that down, huh? Ever. You did it to me. It's all love. It's all love. <laughs> I appreciate the fact that you've become a mentor and a Yoda for so many of the current players, so to speak. And it was really hard for me to decide who was going to win MVP, whether it was James Harden and his 65 wins, averaging 30-plus points, or LeBron James basically flirting with a triple-double each night. If you had a vote, who would you have chosen? Well, you know, I, I think you know, James has done so much all season long, you know, and, and for the last two years, he's been playing phenomenally well and uh, had it not been for uh, Westbrook's historical run last year, um, you know, he certainly would have won an MVP last year. And I think, you know, which Russell, by the way, just you know, averaged another triple-double again this season. But I think what James has done from, from game one all the way through game 82 deserves to be rewarded. I mean, this guy has worked his butt off for uh, – the entire season and has gotten his team to the place where they are now. I, you know, I just don't know what there's left for him to do uh, to average MVP. Rookie of the year voting is going to be very interesting this year because Ben Simmons, who looks like a generational talent, is probably going to win it. But some people, and I'm one of them, think that by being around the NBA for a full year, he sort of has an almost unfair advantage over those guys who were playing in college as recently as a year ago. What is your sense of whether or not the Rookie of the Year is something the league might want to look into changing the way they structure the award? <laughs> you know, I, I think, uh, you know, both have played extremely well. Um, you know, he's, by definition, he's still a rookie. So, um, uh, you know, he deserves to win the award, as does Mitchell. I mean, they, listen, they both have, have had outstanding years. So, yeah, you know, I think it's it's uh, I think it's pretty funny to sit or sit around listen to people debate whether or not Ben Simmons is a rookie or not. It's his first year playing, so um, you know even though he's had the experience of sitting around and observing the game, right, going through the travel and things like that, things that he can kind of get acclimated to the game, um, you still got to go out there and play. You still got to go out there and perform. Black Mamba, what do you think about how the scenario with Kawhi Leonard and the Spurs has played out? He's only participated in nine games this year. They're currently in the playoffs, and allegedly he's in New York City working out, and there's been a controversy of whether people feel like he should be with the team or not. Well, I don't know what's going on there. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's been kind of a mystery as far as I can tell. I mean, nobody really knows the extent of, of the situation. So, you know, I, I'm not going to comment on it. I, I wish I knew more. If I knew more, I'd certainly have an opinion, but... I really don't know what the hell is going on. Yeah, it's not 100% clear they do either at this point, and maybe that's the biggest problem. Very quickly, let's jump to the Lakers, obviously the team with which you played your entire career and you'll always be associated. It's an interesting time with them. What is your sense of what their future is right now? Is, is, is it going into the free agent market in a huge way? Lonzo Ball, Magic said it's the big summer for him. What is your sense of where the Lakers are right now? Well, yeah, I think they've assembled uh, you know, some great talent. Um, you know, the funny thing about it is, you know, if you take uh, the Golden State Warriors when all those players first came to the team and you move that team from Golden State to Los Angeles, you know, everybody will be calling to get rid of everybody, <laughs> right? Steph's hurt all the time. Clay can't create his own shot. Draymond Green, what position does he play, right? And Golden State instead was able to fly below the radar and develop these players. And all of a sudden, here they are sitting with a team that's a potential dynasty. 
because they had the patience to develop them. Now, I say that to say the Lakers have a tremendous uh, young roster. Um, you know, Rob and Magic both have unbelievable options and, uh, and cap space to play with. Um, so they're going to make all the right moves and make the smart decisions. They put themselves in a great position. Kobe, you've accomplished so much as a basketball player and as an entrepreneur, but how excited were you to win an Oscar and how did you celebrate? <laughs> I didn't, <laughs> you know, it was just one of those things where it's just like, man, what am I doing here? Yeah, you know, I was just playing <laughs> basketball and now here I am sitting at the Academy Awards uh, for writing uh, something. It's uh it was a surreal experience, um, you know, but it's, uh, you know, I think it's, it's um, I try to use it as inspiration um, for all of us athletes. Cause you know, I mean, it's hard to retire and, you know, move on to do something else. Jalen, you've been one of the guys that's been able to move on successfully. Michael Strahan's moved on success. And there's been a few guys who've been able to do it. But, you know, we know how hard it is to, to, to do because you you know, you've been told your whole life that this is your identity, and now it's time to walk away from uh, your identity and find a new one. And it's very, very tough. So uh, winning the Academy Award is uh, hopefully it will be inspiration for other athletes to be able to walk away from the sport that they love. You can watch the first two episodes of Detail. They're available right now on ESPN+. Plus. You can download the new ESPN app and start your free trial of ESPN Plus today, and you will see plenty there of Kobe Bryant. Kobe, thanks a million for doing this. Best of luck with the series. We'll talk again soon. Oh, you got it, man. I appreciate it. Jalen, be safe, my man. All right, fam. Thanks for joining us.